What have we got next? I am um, sort of warmed up now, a dynamic flexibility, the muscles weaving and then start taking off. Why are you changing the poles there? Um, basically it's just too soft so it's like blown through way too much so I'll move up a pole and then I'll be able to actually make the pole so it's going too far in the bed. So. How many poles would you use throughout a session? Well today it's kind of different, probably go through about 10, normally about 5 poles. So, so it, it deloads the athlete in terms of stress because they're on an elevated takeoff. so jumping over the pole becomes so much easier so we can just uh, do more jumps, higher reps and sort of play around with bigger poles than normal without any stress on the athlete. So it's a good opportunity for using different poles and experimenting and working with different things in the jump without, without too much pain. It's the first time I've seen something like this. It's quite, quite yeah, impressive. It up there. Like, so we've got a downhill one as well that goes to an elevated takeoff, but this is far better in terms yeah. of specificity and things like that. So that's really yeah, cool. Quite like it. Yeah, oh, the jump and there's a few sort of key performance indicators that we're working on with Holly at the moment. Uh, the first one is making sure that she releases through her shoulders at takeoff, that she's not blocking with her arms, and that sort of is linked to her plant when she uh, when she takes off. Um, and then beyond that, just making sure she's not sitting in a swing, that the swing is one continuous flowing movement um, up to the sort of inverted position. Okay. Uh, I know we spoke about it before, but um, in terms of this ramp you've got placed on here, mm -hmm. uh, do you think that's um, like helping the the voltage jump higher during the sessions, or is yeah, it, yeah. it? It does, yeah. Um, but like I said, it's, so it does, it does create a little bit of a false situation. But it allows them to use poles that they haven't used before. It reduces the stress on the athlete. They can do more jumps um, without having to push too hard. They can use shorter run-ups um, than normal to use those sort of poles, which means we can do more volume and things like that. So there's lots and lots of benefits to it. Um, but like I say, it, they, they can't take too much from it in terms of how high they're jumping or what poles they're using because it's not realistic. But at the same time, it's a it's a nice tool for sort of doing other things. But yeah, I mean, a lot, of the, a lot of the work that we've done in terms of that sort of physical preparation and getting people sort of capable of doing high volume of jumps and things like that, so a lot of that work's been done. You know, we did 15 weeks of pretty intense preparation. Now we're into competition phase. Um, we use a slightly different sort of rollover cycle where we're never really pushing that hard. Um, so tools like this are useful for just, yeah, allowing us to keep jumping without sort of stressing the body too much. Yeah. Uh, having said that, we've got a two week gap now before we compete again. Okay. Um, so this was a sort of a play session and a sort of yeah, yeah. A, a low stress session. We will ramp it up a little bit on Friday and jump on the floor and, and jump on some longer runs on, on Friday yeah. and then we'll then taper down again next week into the into the next comp. Good session there. Are you pleased with that? Yeah, it's the first time I've been on the raised run-up that we had there so I was really happy. At first I had a bit of a shaky start but then to use four six poles never used them before it's a good opportunity to get on them and work them out really. Yeah, I noticed you got quite a lot of feedback off Scott during those in-between vaults. Is that something like you get a lot of normally or is it kind of just a, these kind of technical sessions? Um, yeah, I mean, he's always there giving us pointers to try and make us better, but we're trying to become more independent athletes, so he's, he always asks us, what did you feel, how do you, how do you improve on that and to help us learn, so in the future we can, we can, you know, we can go to a competition on our own and be able to do it, but it's nice to have someone there watching, making sure we're not close, far, mm. etc, stuff like that, so yeah, it's good to get feedback. So the, the polls you used, I asked you before, but like, what kind of, what's the difference between the, between the poles and why you're changing them so often? Because that's just something that I find quite interesting. Yeah, a lot of people that don't really know about pole vault, like don't, it's really, really complicated, but there's different like lengths of pole, different like bendability, some are stiffer, some are softer. And the, the stiffer the pole you've got, the higher bar you can clear. So you're trying to work up to using the stiffer ones so you can clear a higher bar. But if you're not going to turn the pole over, if it's too stiff, you're just going to land back on the track. So you've got to kind of, kind of get that balance. So that's why we move up lots of poles. So if you jump up 450 then, weren't it? And those jumps probably. Um, what, what size pole would you use for those 450 jumps? Um, well, I use a range of 445 poles for when I'm off 16 on, you know, in a competition I'll use a range of 440 foot length, 4 meters 45, and they'll range from different flex, flexes, so, um, but I'm trying to, we're trying to work on getting onto 460 poles, because obviously the longer the pole you are, the higher you're going to jump, so that's what we were aiming to get to. So, for, say, for example, last season you were using, what poles you using in competition there? We were using, I was using the same set of 445s there, so. Are you hoping to step up to like a, because I spoke to, 
uh, Scott before and they were saying a stiffer pole helps like um, you normally go off slightly softer pole don't you yeah why is that when you go on softer poles you're working more of your technique whereas if you're trying to clear a bar you use stiffer ones but me because I've, I've just um, switched coaches to Dan and Scott was changing so many things we're trying to stay on soft poles and um, work technique and then once our technique's ingrained then we can move up onto stiff poles no problem so. it's obviously you mentioned Dan then um, you were over in Arizona for a while doing training with him. How does that differ to the training we've just seen today? Um, it's a lot. Di it's it's a lot. A lot of the same. It's exactly the same program. When I'm in America, I do Dan's program. When I'm here, Scott implements Dan's program to me, Sally, and Bryony. So um, it's exactly the same training. It's just that Dan's not here, and um, Scott has a lot of the, Scott and Dan talk a lot of the internet and they liaise with each other and give feedback to each other. So I think Dan's teaching a lot um, to Scott, and Scott's like teaching teaching me a lot. So no, it's really nice to have two good coaches. So this session you've done. You spent about it's about two and a half hours now jumping uh, this morning so uh, what's after this now what happens well we normally have like quite an intense volume session so after it we normally do a few lighter stuff so we've got like one um, general strength circuit which is like core exercises arm um, exercises then we've got a med ball circuit which is more for like flexibility and all the small muscles but usually we lift every day but because it's in comp phase now we've done quite an intense volume session we're going to do a couple of just like core bits here. so you spent probably like including this, this session today be about four and a half hours probably down the track doing that is that something that happens every day or is it just like after competition? No, yeah, every day our training session can span up to five hours, different, yeah. different things, there's lots of different components and the thought behind it is that Dan says that um, it like, replicates a competition, so you can be out in a competition for five hours, so he replicates training so that when you're in that situation, you're used to it.